if when they come and not they able to sleep, because they think I say, what it be happy? I must, and they think about I must happen back. So that now we afraid now now. So this rain come all day Sunday, throughout the night back Sunday, say the clean Monday. We auntie call me, say the boy I hear news, but so sad on a day and now disaster don't take place there. Say come quick. Any side where you they say just left anything where you they padule you can. I hear a sound where they go and shake about two them. Make it three them now it explode. It explode will be gissy stone. The Red Cross says more than 600 people are now missing and that more than 200 have been killed after heavy rains caused a severe mudslide in the West African nation of Sierra Leone. To me, I'm believing as I say the ground is open. All the holes then go inside, then wait till come on up, it can embed. So I come, they are not even rich down to we. We say we all stay outside on bed. I lived over there. I was living with my uncle, uh, a family of 12. But I left six months before it happened. When I came over, I said, no, 25 houses are missing. They've been covered, not even moved, but they are covered. And they say in Peking, where they breastfeed, the water now be go with her. So I begin walking back to the hospital there. You know, they, they, I won't come back. So they, they dig the body there. I know they will see her. So like they say, they all don't bury under the dirty. I lost over 50 members of my family as I'm speaking to you now. Over 50 of them. My sister all died, the man died. In Piki where they breastfeed, they died, they all died. Many time I think about this small slide, I refer it to the cry of Sierra Leone. When the war took place, there was a massive rural urban migration to Freetown. So when they came to the city, most of them found themselves or decided to find where the, the value of land is much lower. And these areas could be the hillside slums wherein they settled. Because the structure at the ministry was not that functional, they were unable to cope with the situation. So the people were building here, there, without even going through the due process. So that created a lot of chaos. What's happening? If you talk about the landslide, if you go back 10 years ago, that very area was part of the National Park. Really, people have no business to go and build there. You know, get problem, huh? Okay, if you don't get problem. There was no infrastructure made in terms of road network or anything like that. That means everybody basically started digging into the hill and trying to get the rocks. That's what they use for concreting. So basically, we weakened the foundation of that slope. And it's been going on for a long time. And unfortunately, we had heavy rains that contributed. So it's just all what you needed was a small fault somewhere and it just cracked off. Deforestation is a huge problem. I mean, if you go to National Protected Area Authority, they will tell you that they are fighting it on a daily basis. The forest plays a huge role in terms of protecting the waterways, protecting the slopes, and if you start destroying that ecosystem around us, you're basically inviting problems like what happened with the landslide. Climate change is global. It's not necessarily, it even has to happen in Sierra Leone. What you're doing in the United States or England is coming to affect us. So it's a bigger thing, but everyone has a responsibility. For us, I think it's more about preventing some of these things. Like if you've got a slope, you've got a hill, don't destroy it because the weather patterns are changing. Maybe in August we got 30 inches of rain because of the climate change, and now we are getting maybe 300 inches. 
we have to caution in the way we are disrespecting our environment. If a lot of attention has been drawn to this particular uh, issue, that we are going to expect this, the occurrence of a mudslide, and that we are sitting on a powder keg if nothing is being done seriously to overcome this. So if all these warnings were there and not much was taken, I will consider that the recent mudslide is really not natural. It is to a large extent man-made. I mean, we all know that most cities across the developing world, we are grappling with all this urbanization of the poor. Urbanization is not going to go away, but that's why you have uh, institutions created to plan it. Urbanization is good if you are able to manage it very well. Cities contribute over 60, 70 percent of the GDP in most countries. Same applies to Freetown. Now the question is, are we in a position to manage it well? That's an open question. The stark reality is this, that we've stopped planning f for decades. I mean, if you look at Freetown, you look at the Central Business District, you see some resemblance of planning. You see the streets, you know, well planned, well structured. But after the 60s, 70s, we stopped. Why, I don't know. And so since then, planning has never been a national priority until recently. If we were to develop the city, looking at the geography or the topography of Freetown, you realize that it has a very small space of land that settlement or housing could be done. And if we were to do infrastructural development in the hillside areas, we would have put in certain mitigation measures in terms of the runoff. That was not done. Also, looking at the number of slum communities each year that are affected by floodwaters, we should have looked at what type of housing should have been established in this area. Inside this community is about 7,000 people where at least they suffer this uh, 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 flooding. Uh, uh, if you can see the demarcation of the water, and you saw the water be rich, and this water don't pour beaucoup de party for we. Where the water, the flooding, where the cow don't then rubbish them. You go clear, tell you the tire. Then the remnants where they left now, now they mosquito they can't breed. Me big one, I know they see this at drink them. But where they send us, they can't get from me, they couldn't cancel. Let me that. If you thirsty, they the tip a drink. Sometimes that's all they cause for letting they get this cholera diarrhea. Over the 30 years old on there, we don't ever experience flooding at this Congo Tong community. Ever. We see Canada trouble in the carries. From observations, living in Freetown and in Sierra Leone for several decades now, I'll say that the weather conditions have changed a lot. We used to have six months of rainy season, six months of dry season. Now the rainy season has been restricted to a couple of months, and within these restricted months, the intensity has increased intensively. The climate change now, just one hour or one hour, 30 minutes, rain and the flood. You worry, you worry. It all happened 2015, 2016, and 2017. We don't know. So then 2018 will be the worst. We own preparation all. We they call upon government for giving a return reward, that now we have preparation because we pour. We pour. Oh, yeah. Yes, Mama, Mrs. Sessia, yes, God. All people have been live there. All things go backward now. Our school now, they, like I see them picking their normal now. Now, so all man they are now. Work no day. So man I be worker. Before then, I will left right now with me picking. Where I go with the morning, they are in two picking the way we go all the day. They know you understand right now. Up till now, wait here for them. And they ask me, I can say that mama don't go buy market. So we can never tell it. If we come here now, we go to a village. We go find we send a village. We go tell them. Then they say understand. I have their pictures on my phone. When I watch them, I fall tears. I try hard as a young man to resist, but when resisting, they are persisting. 
and most of my family members we are helping me educationally, financially, in terms of feeding. But being that I have lost all of them, sometimes even to get a daily meal, it's hard. What moved me really from my own village to the city is education. Because the school I was attending at my village, there's no lights, there is no computer, there is no phone like for internet facility. Sometimes teachers that do come to the city when they explain to me, do you know about internet when I was in the village? You know, I was like a dreamer, asking what is internet, what is internet, when I don't even know about phone. If I come to the city, I get my education no matter what. Whatever resources I get here, I can go back to my village, you know, bring on board. Now, when this thing don't be now, now begin to then kind of story that I see. They be don't say let no billion there. They no save. They be don't say under bad. Me, it all be said to let them use the man no area. What I will get in life, you don't see die they go day. Where you don't see say under if I go there, they go die day. They still go day. But now another word in they say we because God don't kill. You don't get any option. You are supposed to safeguard your citizens. That is why you have a government. My question to them is, why are you allowing people to go and settle down in these vulnerable areas? Why didn't you advise the people? It is not the Minister of Lands allowing them. Someone may build a house anywhere until he, he or she completes that house without the knowledge of the, the ministry. So by the time you realize you have a whole settlement in a particular area. I'm not saying it's not the responsibility of the government, it is. But fortunately, the government is not in that position to effectively monitor development control. I mean, those are the challenges. Mohamed Bangla, when a Minister of Information, he get OSIA. Uda Giam, na Ministry of Lands, na government man. So if they be seller with Komoya, then they leave there. If you see them there, the government are where people are there, they live here. That's true that you have these government officials being in those areas. Unfortunately, there's too much lawlessness within, the, within this country. People don't have respect for the laws of Sierra Leone, so it allows them to do whatever they want to do. There are clear rules, but what else do you expect if the elites who are supposed to be enforcing these rules are at the forefront of building in such places? You can't be surprised if you see the poor going to also grab a place. For me, it's very simple. Nobody can own a land here without a survey plan from the Ministry of Lands, right? So if the Ministry of Lands clearly says this is green belt, then I think it's very easy to stop it. Find the person who signed that permit. Get rid of him. Easy as that. We don't really need to go run after the little guys who are trying to encroach. These are poor people. They're desperate. They are marginalized, basically. This is where I think government needs to come in and implement these policies they have. If we don't stop it, I think what we saw is just the beginning. I I'm very, very scared. There's more to come. I know this area very well. And there are many areas that are even more vulnerable than the very place that collapsed. It's unfortunate that a lot of people had to die unnecessarily. I feel very much uncomfortable that in a modern world whereby some of these things can be taken for granted by various other nations. We still continue to grapple with it. It's really unfortunate, it's really sad. <laughs>